بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو انادر ماڈیول آف کانویکس آپٹیمائزیشن کورس ان دس کورس ماڈیول ویل ٹاک اباؤٹ کونک آپٹیمائزیشن اینڈ سیمی ڈیفینیٹ پروگرامنگ سو وی ول اسٹارٹ وتھ کانویکس آپٹیمائزیشن پرابلمس ود جنرلائزڈ ان ایکوالٹی کنسٹرینٹس لیٹر وی ول فارمولیٹ کونک آپٹیمائزیشن پرابلمس اینڈ دین وی ول ریویو سیمی ڈیفینیٹ پروگرامنگ ایز اے اسپیشل کیس آف کونک آپٹیمائزیشن پرابلمس We begin with a quick review of generalized inequality and convexity with respect to generalized inequality. So if you have two vectors, a proper cone K allows us to compare two vectors and uh, say we have a proper cone K which is a subset of RM. We can define a generalized inequality that allows us to compare two vectors in RM. Say we take two vectors x, y in Rm. So we say that x is less than or equal to y with respect to cone k if and only if x minus sorry y minus x belongs to the proper cone k. In other words, we say we have a vector z that is in Rm. We say this vector is greater than or equal to zero with respect to proper cone k. if and only if this vector belongs to the cone k so using generalized inequality we can also define convexity for vector valued functions so let's define convexity with respect to generalized inequality say we take a function uh, which is uh, that maps from rn to rm we say this function is k convex if we have a proper cone k which is a subset of rm and we have jensen inequality with respect to generalized inequality we say that f uh, at theta x plus 1 minus theta y is less than or equal to with respect to uh, generalized inequality invoked by proper cone k uh, theta f of x plus 1 minus theta f of y so we have jensen inequality that holds Uh, with respect to generalized inequality here we take theta between 0 and 1 and x and y just two points it belongs to domain of f okay um, now we define convex optimization problems with generalized inequality constraints so previously we used to define convex optimization problem which we refer to as ordinary convex optimization problem in this form that we minimize objective function subject to inequality constraints and some affine equality constraints so previously we used to take that f0 is a function from that maps from rn to r and each of these fi's maps from rn to r so these are scalar valued function and uh, we refer to the problem as convex optimization problem if each f0 and fi are convex one generalization of this ordinary convex optimization problem if we allow these constrained functions to be vector valued it simply means we minimize f0 of x subject to fi of x less than or equal to 0 since these functions fi are now vector valued we require a proper cone to define inequality or generalized inequality okay so we take f0 is a function that maps from rn to r and each of these fi say we each fi maps from rn to r pi so each vector maps to a space of different dimension and we we say that each fi is ki convex that means we have a cone ki for each fi that is a subset of rpi that allows us um, to compare uh, this vector valued function in the space rpi and uh, obviously we require each of these ki to proper cone and um, then we have a fine equality constraints 
So, so this problem formulation in which we allow constraint inequality constraint functions to be vector valued and we use proper cones to uh, define generalized inequalities, we refer to this formulation of the optimization problem as convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraints. Obviously, uh, you can see very easily that if each of these pi is equal to one and each of these ki is let's say a non-negative orthant, ki is r plus. So, and this holds for each i and from one to m, we can say that this convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraints becomes an ordinary convex optimization problem in which this generalized inequality is replaced with uh, ordinary inequality. So we can say that this convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraints is a generalization of ordinary convex optimization problem. Let's review some of the properties of uh, this convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraints. First of all, we talk about feasible set. So feasible set is defined by inequality constraints. We say feasible set for this problem is x such that each inequality constraint function is less than or equal to zero with respect to generalized inequality ki. And we have m number of these inequalities. And then we have uh, affine mm, equality constraints. So since each of this fi is ki convex, so its sublevel set is also convex. So we can say the feasible set is convex. This is uh, in line with what we had for ordinary optimization problem. We also say that optimal set for which objective function is minimized is also convex because it's a subset of a feasible set. And then we say that locally optimal point is a globally optimal point because this is a convex optimization problem. And uh, then we say that we have the same optimality criterion what we had for ordinary convex optimization problem. That is, we require that gradient of the objective function times y minus x is greater than or equal to zero for all y belongs to f. If this holds for x that belongs to the feasible set, we say the x is optimal. So this optimal this optimality criterion, this optimality criterion is in fact the same what we had for ordinary convex optimization problems. Since ordinary problem is a special case of convex optimization problems with generalized inequality constraints. We say that most of the results that hold for ordinary convex optimization problems also hold for convex optimization problems with generalized inequality constraints. Let's talk about one of the simplest form of convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraints. So that is referred to as conic form problems. In convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraints, if we allow objective function to be affine or linear and inequality constraint functions to be affine, that means we're minimizing a linear function or a fine function that's minimizing C transpose X subject to a fine inequality constraints. That is AI X minus BI less than or equal to with respect to generalized inequality that is defined by a cone K I zero. And we have uh, these inequality constraints for i is equal to 1 to up to m and we also have affine equality constraints. So this is very similar to LP but instead what we have here is so these we have these ki or these cones proper cones these proper cones ki so they are defining these inequality constraints. So or we can say this is 
a conic constraint or a linear conic constraint. Right. So in this form of optimization problem are known as conic form problems or conic optimization problems or conic programs or CP. So since uh, this is very similar to LP, we can say that conic form problems generalize linear program. We note here that if you choose different Ki here that defines this inequality constraint, you can formulate different types of optimization problems. So the cones for which we have a tractable conic optimization problem. So there are three types of cones. So we have studied uh, very extensively three different types of cones. The first one is if this K is non-negative orthant, if we take a proper cone as non-negative orthant, or we can take this, K, this cone K to be quadratic or second order cone, or we can take K as a positive semi-definite cone or a cone defined by positive semi-definite matrices. In conic form problems, if we take proper cone as non-negative orthant, so this inequality constraint in which we have AIX minus BI less than or equal to zero with respect to generalized inequality becomes this constraint in which we have AIX minus BI less than or equal to zero, but here this, general, this generalized inequality is in fact a component-wise inequality or we can say generalized inequality becomes component-wise inequality and each of these linear inequality constraints, so this represents half spaces. So, so inequality constraints defining half spaces, this is in fact a linear program. If we take proper cone as non-negative orthant in conic optimization problem, what we obtain is a linear program or we can say a linear program is a special case of conic optimization problems in which the proper cone that defines generalized inequality is a non-negative orthant. If we take Ki to be quadratic or second order cone, a conic optimization problem becomes second order cone programming. So we have SOCP when K is quadratic or second order. Let's review this in more detail. So we define SOCP that we minimize a linear function, a fine function subject to second order constraints of this form. And we have M number of these constraints and then we have a fine equality constraints. Okay. Uh, so let's formulate this second order constraint as a conic constraint and we have we have seen this before as well that if we have this second order constraint we can equivalently express this as in this form which ax plus b c transpose x plus d so this vector belongs to a second order cone and uh, in fact this cone k is a subset of R k plus one because a x plus b belongs to R k and c transpose x plus d is a scalar. So this vector a x plus b c transpose x plus d this belongs to R k plus one. So this cone k is a quadratic cone which is a subset of R k plus one. Uh, we can also write it as negative of a x plus b c transpose x plus d less than or equal to zero. Here this cone K is, is a second order cone or a quadratic cone or we can say when proper cone is a quadratic cone in the conic optimization problem we recover second order cone program or conic optimization problem becomes SOCP when the proper cone that defines generalized inequality that is defines inequality constraints is second order or quadratic. So for conic optimization problem, 
we talked about three choices of the cones. If we take cone as non-negative orthant, conic optimization problem becomes a linear program. If we take cone as quadratic cone, conic optimization problem becomes SOCP. But if we take cone as a positive semi-definite cone, or we take cone as a set of positive semi-definite matrices, a conic optimization problem becomes what we refer to as a semi-definite program. Before we uh, formally define semi-definite program, uh, let's quickly review uh, linear matrix inequality because that is what we need uh, for the formulation of STP. So we take we define linear matrix inequality uh, for a vector x that belongs to Rn and we take uh, n number of matrices a1, a2, an and a matrix b. So these all matrices are symmetric and they belong to sp. Uh, for these matrices and for x we define a linear matrix inequality as we take x1, a1 plus x2, a2 and so on x n n less than or equal to b. Since we have matrices on both sides of inequality, so this inequality here is a generalized inequality uh, and that is defined by a cone of uh, positive semi-definite matrices. So if we uh, define the sum of these matrices to be A of X, so that is a function of X, uh, so we can write this linear matrix inequality abbreviated as LMI in this form. So AX is less than or equal to B. This implies B minus A of X is greater than or equal to zero with respect to positive semi-definite cone. And uh, we can also write this as A of X minus B less than or equal to zero in standard form. That uh, AX minus B is less than or equal to zero uh, with respect to positive semi-definite cone. So this, this inequality is referred to as linear matrix inequality. Uh, let's also review uh, some of the properties of this LMI. So if we take uh, these matrices A1 up to AN and B as scalars, so we take A1 is a scalar and up to AN is a scalar and B is also a scalar. And if you substitute these scalar values in LMI, so what you get is, is something like this, a linear inequality uh, or ordinary, ordinary inequality, which is in fact a half space. So we can say this LMI becomes a half space or a linear inequality on these matrices and R scalars. So we also note that a set defined by this LMI that set is given by this S, S, S such that S is equal to X such that AX minus B is less than or equal to zero, a set defined by LMI. So we note here that this set is, is convex since it is an image of, it's an inverse image of positive semi-definite cone under a fine function B minus A of X, which is a linear function in X. So we, we, we say that uh, a set defined by LMI is convex. Now we are all equipped to define semi-definite program abbreviated as SDP. So SDP is a conic optimization problem. When we take cone that defines inequality constraints as positive semi-definite cone. So let's formulate STP. In STP, we minimize a linear function subject to linear matrix inequality constraints. So we have these LMIs. On left hand side of inequality, we have a linear function of X that is defined by the matrices and LMI is less than or equal to zero with respect to positive semi-definite one. And we can have a number of these LMIs. And yes, we can also have a fine equality constraints. So in SDP, we minimize 
c transpose x a linear function of x subject to linear matrix inequality constraints and a fine equality constraints so uh, we can also note that as we said earlier that if these matrices that define lmi are scalars linear matrix inequality reduces to a linear inequality constraint in fact half spaces or uh, we can say sdp becomes a linear program in fact so we also note that uh, these multiple lmi constraints can be formulated as a single lmi as follows so if you have these multiple lmi constraints we can formulate or we can group all of these lmis in the form of a block diagonal matrix uh, so diag is just a command uh, uh, which takes multiple arguments and returns a block diagonal matrix so if you return if you uh, pass a1 of x minus b1 of x a2 of x minus b2 and so on so all of these m lmis as an input argument uh, so this die converts into a block diagonal matrix or as a single LMI. To represent SOCP as STP, we only need to show that how can we formulate a second order constraint as linear matrix inequality constraint. To do that, we first need to study what we call a shared complement. And that is something very good to know. Uh, the shared complement of a matrix uh, arises in many applications in several contexts. So that is something good to know. Okay, let's talk about shared complement. So for a matrix X that is symmetric and, and defined by these matrices A, B, B transpose C. So provided this matrix A is non-singular, we can define a shared complement of a symmetric matrix X with respect to matrix A. So we're denoted by S and it is given by this relationship between C, A and B. The shared complement of a matrix X with respect to A matrix that is non-singular is given by C minus B transpose A inverse B. And so this shared complement can reveal us uh, different characteristics about the matrix X. For example, if this matrix X is positive definite, if and only if, if this matrix A is positive definite and its shared complement is also positive definite. So we can use this relationship between uh, X a and shared complement of x to identify positive definiteness of the different matrices. Furthermore, we also note that if this A is positive definite, then x is positive semi-definite if and only if, if shared complement is positive semi-definite. So let's use uh, the shared complement uh, to formulate a second order constraint as linear matrix inequality so second order constraint is given by this expression that we have uh, for a matrix a a x plus b including norm is less than or equal to c transpose x plus d and uh, obviously we require c transpose x plus d is greater than or equal to zero since on left hand side we have a uh, norm and that is non negative by definition so before we formulate this second order constraint as LMI, so let's start with a very simple second order constraint in which we have equilibrium norm of X is less than or equal to T. So, so now we want to represent this constraint as LMI. Let me define this matrix. So that is, we have a matrix which is of size uh, n plus 1 times n plus 1. So n plus 1 times uh, n plus 1. And on diagonal we have this, these t's. So the last column is uh, x comma t. And the last row is uh, x comma t transpose. 
So if we partition this matrix into four matrices, so we have say we have A here, we have B here and we say here is B transpose and we say this is C. Right. So or we can write compactly this in this form that we have this X here, X transpose, so T times identity of size N and this T is a scalar here. So what I'm going to show that this second order constraint is equal into this LMI linear matrix inequality because this is linear in X and we have this in inequality with respect to positive semi-definite cone. It, so if I, if I take the shared complement of, of this matrix, so what I get is, so C minus B transpose, so A inverse, so since A is T times I N, inverse we can by simply I N divided by T, and then we have this, this B here. So this is a shared complement. Since this matrix is positive semi-definite and A is positive definite, so this, this S would be, or shared complement would be greater than or equal to zero since the shared complement is just a scalar here, right? Or if you simplify this, this can be written as X transpose X less than or equal to T squared which is in fact uh, very similar to what we have this second order constraint. So that's how we can say that uh, we can represent this second order constraint. This can be written as this LMI. So using the same analogy, we can represent this second order constraint as LMI. So if we define a matrix uh, in which, so here we have C transpose X plus D is just a scalar. So here we have made AX plus B, AX plus B transpose. So, and here we have C transpose X plus D. Since AX plus B belongs to uh, RK and AX plus B transpose belongs to uh, also RK and C transpose X plus D would be just a scalar. So you can say that so this matrix, the size of this matrix would be simply K plus one times K plus one. And this is positive semi-definite uh, provided this second order constraint holds. That's how we can represent a second order constraint as LMI. Or we can say, uh, we can represent or we can formulate a second order cone program as semi-definite program because we can convert every second order constraint as a semi as linear matrix inequality. Before we finish today, let's look at the big picture and connect the dots what we've studied so far. So we started with convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraints. So we minimize objective function, which is scalar valued, subject to fi of x less than or equal to zero with respect to proper cones ki. So we allow these inequality constraint functions to be vector valued and we, we use these proper cones uh, to define these, this generalized inequality. And obviously we have affine equality constraints. And uh, we know that if these FIs are scalar valued, this problem becomes ordinary convex optimization problem. One of the simplest uh, case of convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraint is that if we take objective function to be linear and these inequality constraint functions FI to be affine. So that is, uh, if you minimize a linear function subject to affine inequality constraints. But here again, uh, we should mention that 
so these functions are vector valued and we have different cones here and that define these generalized inequalities this is this formulation is referred to as a cone program or cp so since we have a choice of cone here so we know that we can choose different types of cones so for three types of cones uh, for which this conic program is tractable are we have non-negative orthent and then we have a quadratic cone or positive semi-definite cone uh, before we look at these three cases so we, we also note that this conic program is a generalization of a linear program so we have a linear function affine inequality constraints and affine inequality constraints so we can say cocp is a generalization of lp and if we take this cone as non-negative orthant cp indeed becomes lp uh, we can take k to be non-negative orthant we can take k to be a second order or quadratic cone or lorentz cone or we can take k as positive semi-definite cone uh, when this cone is non-negative orthant cp is cp becomes lp and when this quadratic uh, when this cone is a quadratic cone so we have socp uh, qc qp qp lp and when this cone is and when and when this cone is positive semi-definite cone uh, we have sdp uh, socp qc qp qp lp in some texts this big picture is represented in this graphical form that lp is a subset of qp qp is a subset of socp and obviously qc qp is somewhere here and socp is a subset of sdp and all of these are special forms of uh, a conic program or conic optimization problems which is in fact a special case of a uh, convex optimization problem with generalized inequality constraints so we stop here and we will continue in the next module thank you very much